I'm going to quickly introduce you to the TLR Film Grain Effects Action Set, and I'm also going to show you how to modify the film grain effects for your photograph. Now you'll notice for this example that I've already started out with a photograph that I've applied a black and white conversion and a sepia tone effect. I did all of that with the TLR Sepia Tone Action Set, and you can see the result of that up here. There's a couple of layers. There's a channel mixer layer here for the black and white conversion, and then there's also a hue saturation layer here for the sepia tone effect. Let's close that layer group, and let's go over to the action, and let's quickly look at the TLR Film Grain Effects Action Set. Now inside this action set, there are six basic actions. Three of these are designed to simulate black and white film when a photograph has already been converted to black and white and it's in grayscale mode. This will also work well if a photograph is in CMYK or lab because the film grain effect is going to be applied to the composite channel. The three color film effect actions work with RGB images. Now color film doesn't really have film grain. they are dye clouds, but those dye clouds can get a splotchiness that's very similar to film grain. If you have a black and white photograph that hasn't yet been converted from RGB, I recommend actually using these for doing your film grain effect. And that's what I'm going to do here because we have a sepia tone image and it's still in RGB mode. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use one of the color film actions. And the reason for that is because the effect is applied differently to the three channels. You'll notice here in this action, we first select the blue channel, we add noise, select the green channel, add noise, select the red channel and add noise, and then select the composite RGB channel. This is very different from up here with, with the black and white actions, where if I open up one of those, we're working entirely with the composite channel. Now the idea here is that we want to apply a stronger grainy effect to the blue channel, a slightly weaker effect to the green channel, and an even weaker effect yet to the red channel. We're going to start off with 65% here for a high grain effect on the blue channel. The green channel is only going to get a 50% add noise filter effect for its setting, and the red channel 35%. So let's go ahead and start by running the action on this photograph. This will take a moment. Quite a bit of work is getting done. Now with Photoshop CS3, CS4, all of this work is going to be done on a smart filters layer. And you can see here that seven different filter effects have been applied to one single smart filters layer. The advantage of the Smart Filters layer is you now have control over every one of those effects. Even if you save the photograph and you open it up later, you can change any one of those effects at any time. So in order here, at the bottom here with Add Noise, this is applied to the blue channel, this is applied to the green, this was what was applied to the red channel, and then everything else gets applied to the composite channel. If you want to make an adjustment, for example, to what happened on the blue channel, you need to go up to the channels palette and toggle the blue channel and make your adjustment. And now if you go here, double click on add noise, you can now make any change you want to, and this will affect only the blue channel. You could tone this down if you wanted to. You could increase this noise. I'm going to go ahead, put it right back close to where it was, 65%, click OK. So we start by applying noise separately to the blue, the green, and the red channels. Go back here, make certain that we have the RGB channel selected. Because at this point now, we want to take the noise and we want to give it a splotchier appearance. We want to make it look clumpier. So one way of doing that is to run the Gaussian blur filter. Now in this case, that's run with one and a half pixels. If you want to make it look a little more splotchier, a little more clumpier, you could pull it to two. If you want the grain to look a little sharper, you could pull it down to something like one. I'm going to put it back around 1.5 again. The median filter is going to pick up where the Gaussian blur filter left off. It's going to add to the splotchiness. Radius of 2, if we reduce it here to 1, the grain will start to look a little grainier. Make it a 2, looks a little clumpier. The next step is to go back and add some more noise. We want the noise to have a different pattern. Now down here when we were applying it to the individual channels, if you go ahead and open up any of these, you'll notice that we were using a Gaussian distribution. To give the additional noise that we're going to add a different look to it, we're going to go ahead and use a uniform distribution. And we're going to add just a small amount of noise. So we will have noise with a different pattern and different size here. 10%, you can see, it's very, very small noise. We want to make it a little bigger, a little more pronounced. We can make this something like 20%. And let's just go ahead and do that for a moment. And then the final step is unsharp mask. That's going to take the noise. It's going to give it a little more sharpness, the noise that we just added. And if we make the amount setting large enough, we can also get some negative noise. And that's where we get these white artifacts. In this case, I've used an amount of 110 and a radius of 1.8 pixels. And you could adjust this, and that again would affect the noise pattern. Pull it up to something like 130, and we get a little more negative noise in there. So you can see that with the TLR film grain effects, you have a lot of control over the appearance of the grain in your digital photographs.
I'll go ahead, I'll magnify this a moment from 20%, make it something like 50% quickly, just so that you can see the film grain effect. And then you can adjust this to your own liking. You can see that the layer opacity has been set at 25%. You can make the noise have more appearance simply by pulling up the opacity. You can reduce the noise by reducing the opacity. You'll also notice that the layer blend is overlay. If you use soft light, you will change the appearance of the noise. You will soften it. And if you use hard light, you can give the noise a harsher appearance. So you have a lot of creative possibilities with this action set for giving your photographs a digital film grain effect. I hope you find the TLR film grain effects action set helpful with your digital photography. I'm Glenn Mitchell from thelightsright.com. Cheers.